Today I'm going to show you how to make your own infused herbal oil. Infused oils are a great easy way to take the healing and soothing properties from medicinal plants and extract them into a form that's usable topically, like an oil. So once we have made our infused oil, we can use it as is, or we can go on to use it as an ingredient in other skincare products like salves, body butters, balms, um, or even massage oil. I personally love infused oils because they're super simple to make, they have a really long shelf life, and they will work wonders on a lot of the common skincare complaints that we have. So stick around and we will dive right in. Let's talk materials. Um, today I'm going to be using dried calendula flowers. I grew these in my garden um, and I like to work with dried material because I find the extra moisture content in fresh material can contribute to rancidity in my oil and I just don't want to take that chance. So I always go with dried. Um, and I'm looking for something that is soothing and healing for the skin and calendula has all kinds of great properties for the skin. Um, so that is why I chose this plant. You may have other purposes um, for your oil, so you definitely wanna do your research, find a plant that is appropriate or a combination of plants. I'm just using one, but you could use a blend of like three to five if you wanted. Um, next, you wanna choose your oil. So I use extra virgin olive oil. Um, it's really easy to find, it's very shelf stable, and it penetrates the skin really nicely. Now, if you were doing something like a massage oil, you may want to use something that isn't quite this heavy, um, but for my purposes, this works great. You'll also want to have a jar, a mason jar is just fine, um, to seal your oil up in and uh, store it. And then a spatula or a spoon, um, something to strain your herb from your oil. So I have a mesh nylon bag and a coffee filter. Uh, you could use like a funnel and a muslin cloth if that's easier. And then I am going to show you um, a heat extraction today. So if you're going to use that method, then you'll also want like a double boiler. I don't have one, but I use a um, stainless steel bowl on a kettle and that works just fine. And then finally, I also am going to use a blender or a food processor today because I have whole flowers and I wanna grind those down nice and small um, so that the oil penetrates as much surface area as possible. If you're sourcing from a wholesaler or a store, your herb material might already be very finely ground, so that may not be necessary. So let's see uh, the steps, let's get started. Okay, the cool thing about this being a topical um, solution, something we're gonna be putting on our skin, is we don't have to be super, super picky about our measuring. Um, basically, we're gonna do like a one-to-one -one ratio based on volume. Um, if you wanted a stronger oil, you could do extra herb um, and less oil, um, but you definitely want the oil to cover the herbs. So I only have a half cup of oil here because my recipe, I only need like a quarter cup. Um, but if you are going to the trouble to make this and you have the herb and the oil, you may as well just make a whole bunch at a time because this can store for like two to three years if you keep it in the fridge. Um, so then I'm just measuring out my calendula flowers because they're whole um, and fresh. They are pretty voluptuous. So I'm being like a little bit over generous um, and packing them pretty tight because I want a nice, strong, healthy oil. Um, so that's like about a cup. So mine's gonna be pretty strong and I might need to top it off with a little bit of oil. Um, but like I said, I have whole flowers, so I'm gonna blend these up. And this step never hurts. Um, so even if you already have flowers or leaves that are finely ground, you can still um, do this blending step. Um, it'll at least help the oil penetrate like every part of the herb. Um, so I'm just gonna top it off with oil. And that might be not enough we'll see how it blends um you want to basically end up with a kind of like a pesto consistency so i'm betting i'm gonna need a little bit more oil but we'll see how it does so it's actually not bad it's pretty good consistency um but i have a fair amount still on the side so I think I might just add a little bit more oil um, but basically once you have 
get ground up. Um, your oil and your herb are one. Um, you, if you have time, if you don't need this oil tomorrow, you can just put it into a jar and then cover it and put it in a cool, dark place and let it sit for a month. And after four weeks, then you can strain it out and you're done. Like that's all you need to do. But for two reasons, I am going to continue on with the heat extraction method. One, I procrastinated and I need my finished product tomorrow. Um, so I have to do the heat extraction because you can do it in one day. Um, I don't have four weeks, unfortunately. The other reason is because calendula flowers have a, a resinous base. And um, in that base is where most of the medicinal properties are. And resin is um, best extracted in heat. So I want all those properties. I um, am going to do a low heat um, with this oil so that I'm getting all the goodies out of there. Um, so uh, if you got the time and you're not using a resinous plant, go ahead and just stick this in your jar. Let it sit for four weeks and you are done. Um, the rest of you carry on and I'm going to show you how to extract in one day with heat. Okay, so now here we are in the kitchen. Um, I have about a half inch of water in this kettle and I have that heating up over medium heat. And then meanwhile, I transferred the herb oil slurry into this bowl. Um, and I'm just gonna set that on top of this kettle here and let the heat come up. Basically, we are looking for the oil to reach a temperature of 110 degrees. Um, we really don't want it higher than that. The heat is going to help extract those properties into the oil, but if we go higher than that, we're gonna end up frying the herbs and that is not what we're looking for. So uh, this, once this comes up to temp, um, you can use a, a digital thermometer or you can even just use um, your skin to test the temperature. Basically, you're looking for something like, like bath water. It shouldn't burn you. If it burns you, kill the heat, it's too hot. Um, so yeah, once it reaches 110, you wanna leave it there for about four to eight hours. Um, you do wanna keep an eye on it though because the water can evaporate from the bottom. So you'll wanna check on that periodically. And then also, if you have a gas stove like me, uh, the low function is not really ever that low. So it might reach 110 on low and then I'll have to turn off the heat and then check back um, once it's gone down a little bit more. So you just wanna to try to keep it roughly steady around 110 minimum of four hours um, and then we will check back later okay so it's been about four hours and my calendula oil mixture has been on the stove at 110 for that whole time um, i'm not really going to give it any time to cool down because the oil does work a little bit nicer while it is warm for straining so i'm going to take my nylon mesh bag um, Whatever you are using to strain, you're just gonna wanna fashion that inside your funnel-like device. And I have that set over my jar. I got a wider jar um, so that this would just stay in there easier. And you'll just wanna pour your oil in, scrape down the bowl so you get every last drop Okay, so my bowl is clean and you can see oil's already naturally starting to drip in there. You can let it uh, sift through as long as you want, but honestly for me, I don't have that much in here, so I'm just going to go ahead and squeeze it right away. And you definitely want to squeeze it. If you don't want to use your hands because they will get oily. Um, you could use like, um, you could even use a spatula and compress it down. Um, but I find you get all the oil out, or the most oil you can get out if you just squeeze with your hands. Give that a nice good squeeze. See quite a bit more comes out. And a lot of it's on my hands now, um, but fortunately this is a skin soothing oil so I definitely will need to wash my hands but I can also rub some of it into my skin and I have nothing to worry about okay so I did wash my hands um, but basically we're all done with our infused oil at this point you just want to make sure that you let it cool completely 
um, because if you put the cap on while it's warm, condensation is going to form and that can help um, contribute to your oil spoiling. You also want to make sure this jar is completely dry before you put your oil into it. Um, but you just want to label what it is, what date you created it, and then you can use it as is, or you're welcome to now use this, turn it into any kind of skincare product you want. I'm going to use mine and turn it into a belly balm for pregnant bellies. Um, and yeah, that's all there is to it, but there's plenty to explore with herbal oils. You can use any kind of herbs you like um, and turn it into whatever you fancy. So. Hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe.